everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the sixth tutorial on Flutter. We're going to continue down our path with Dart. I'm going to try and go through these fairly quickly, but because Dart is a new language and there's new features, we got to go through some of this elementary stuff. So some of you more advanced folks, just bear with me while I slog through this. There are some new features, so definitely pay attention, and I'll try to call them out when I get there. Um, so this is going to be our advanced functions tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a new project here. Make sure it's Dart console application. And let's call this... It's funk. Why not? I have a really hard time coming up with names for this sort of stuff. And it'll process and do its thing. Tick tock, tick tock. IntelliJ is always so slow. There we go. All right. So we've covered some of this stuff before. Um, we've got our calculate function, which is off in the lib. And we're going to actually use that this tutorial. So if you're curious about how that works, definitely pay attention. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just get rid of this. And we're going to leave this up here this time. And we're going to cover that in just a second, but let's get through the rest of this first. So in our main function, we want to make a variable. And let's just say list. My keyboard's crooked. Bear with me here. This is what happens when you get old and cranky. So we're going to make a list with an integer type. Call it list. And if you remember, these little uh, brackets with the type in it is generic programming because that list can hold more than one type. And then in our list, we're just going to add a few values. So we'll say one. And I'm not going to really uh, add too many variables. Um, I'm actually just going to use this one variable because you know this is a function tutorial and I don't really want to spend a lot of time wasting your time writing variables. So I know a lot of tutorials out there have like these big, weird, complex algorithms that are hard to understand. We're not doing that. All right, so we've got our variable that we're going to work with. Um, so the first thing we're going to cover is a function as an object. Maybe if I could spell object. So what does that really mean? Let's just make our function here. Nothing super special about this, right? And we're just going to say print. I. There's really nothing going on in there. If you remember, everything in Dart is an object, and I mean everything, it, right down to functions. So we're going to say list for each. Now, you notice how there's a little bit of verbiage here, for each, and then there's parentheses, int, and then an arrow, and then void something, something. Um, we're just going to double click it from the moment, and you see how it says void f element, e element, sorry. So really what that's saying is, it cannot return anything void and the function itself is going to take the element now the element goes back to generic programming uh, under the hood this actually says something like this list e and e would be the representation of whatever object we're shoving in there so the template for this thing has to be void cannot return something and then it has to take the element so we're just going to say as object finish this off with our semicolon here and let's actually because we're gonna make a bunch of these I just finished watching stranger things last night oh my god that show is so good but now I'm trying to find other things to watch like a Netflix junkie all right so when we run this this is what happens it says as an object bam and then list for each, and then we're calling the actual function as an object itself. This object is instigated when the code is run, so we don't have to do this, you know, new blah blah blah. It already exists in memory, and there's one copy of it. So as object, and then that has to follow the template. So if we do something like this, it may get kind of franky on us and say, hey, nope, yep, see, argument int string void cannot be assigned, blah 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 blah. Basically, what that's saying is it has to follow the template. And the template is you're passing one element, which is in that list. So that is a function as an object. Um, I tend to not use that too much because then the code gets kind of weird. You're trying to hunt down this thing and figure out what's going on. But if you just want to go through it, then you know I guess it's okay. Uh, what I tend to do is yeah, I'm just going to copy and paste this whole thing rather than type that all out bang as an anonymous function 
<laughs> I'm lazy. I really didn't want to spell anonymous like six times. This keyboard's kind of jacking with me. I need a new one. I was playing Call of Duty, and admittedly, I slammed my fist down on the keyboard, and now it's acting kind of crazy. So, anyways, so we're going to do four each. Now, this time, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do what's called an anonymous function. Now, an anonymous function has kind of a crazy syntax, but it'll save you a lot of headache. What you can do is say for each, and then we're going to just say parentheses, I, and then bracket. And don't forget to close this out with a semicolon. And we're just going to say print I. This is bananas. What is this? Let's run this, make sure this actually works. So as an anonymous function, bang. What, what, what in the heck is going on here? So what we're really doing is we're creating a function in memory that only exists in this little loop here. It actually under the hood gets optimized and it turns into a temporary function in the base code or whatever. But for our purposes, we don't have to jump around all over the place. We just know that, hey, we want to do this and we want to do it right here. So it does the exact same thing as this. It's just you don't have an independent function that you can call as an object. Notice the syntax is we have our parameters. And then we have our brackets, so we have our, our scope block here. And then we have our actual code of what we're going to run. It's pretty simple, pretty elegant. Um, I actually hated anonymous functions when I first saw them. Um, but I think I first saw them in Java, and they just drove me nuts. But they're pretty useful. As you can see, you don't have to make yet a separate function now. If you're going to call this many, many times, like over the course of your entire program, then definitely branch it off into a first class function right here. So, now we're going to external. See what I mean about my keyboard? Ternal. External. Why can you not spell keyboard? I'm going to Best Buy and get a new one. Forget this. External function. So, what is an external function? We've been talking about this little file over here for a while now. Let's crack this back open. You see how it's got a function. It returns an integer, and it's called calculate. And it has no parameters and then it just returns six times seven. We can actually call that externally. So let's just say print. And how do we know what to do? I mean, how do we call that thing? Can we just say calculate? Notice how when you start typing calculate, it recommends advfunk.calc. Where'd it get that name from? Let's just double click it so it puts it in there for us. It actually got it up here from this import statement that we left. And if you accidentally delete it, go ahead and retype all that in. But it's very simple. Import, and then we're importing a package, semicolon, and then the, the path to that package. ADV Funk is actually the name of our project here, ADV Funk. And then the actual Dart file, ADV Funk.dart down here. As, and this is where we're creating the variable. So really, it's that. And we can run this, and you can see the result of that is 42. So let's crack this open. Let's just add another one here. Let's say um, bull loves loves this keyboard. String name. So if you know the person in this function is Brian, me, then I do not love my keyboard. Otherwise, we're going to return true because everybody else in the world loves their keyboard, especially when they're playing Call of Duty, little bastards. All right, so as you can see, whoops, loves this keyboard. And then we could say, I'm so buying a new keyboard. And there's our false. So how would you actually, you know, go about making your own here? You can actually make a new one. We'll just call this Dart file, and let's call this my file. .dart. And rather than typing that out again, we're just going to cut this, put it in our little file. Notice how when we did that, suddenly main.dart got cranky because this no longer exists. So now we got to make another import. 
we're importing a package. And there's different types of imports, but uh, we're just going to cover the package for today. And notice how it actually tries to help you out. So we're going to import adv func slash myfile.dart, the file we just created. Now we make we need to make it as a variable, and let's call this um, call of duty. It is currently grayed out because it's unused. We're going to actually change that. Bang, now suddenly it's used. Does the same thing. So that is how you would import an external function. Now, the next one is going to get a little bit crazy, but this is the last one in our little tutorial here. We're going to compare apples to oranges. You've heard that expression before if you're in the United States, or maybe even if you're out of the United States. So we're going to make optional parameters here, and we're going to say int apples equals zero, and int oranges equals zero. And then we're just going to simply say compare to other number And actually, we don't have to do any of that. We can just return it. I had different in my little notes here how I did it, but this actually... There we go. Maybe. There we go. Hmm, that didn't work either. What did I do wrong here? Return type int. Oh, that's why, because it's doing an int type. Yeah. So the compare to function is something I really didn't want to use, but basically, um, let's just switch this just so we can see. Compare to is used for ordering in lists, which we'll cover in a future tutorial, but uh, let's just do this. What we're really focusing on is this part right here. Uh, we have our function, and all this does is it has optional parameters. Notice these are optional. Uh, they're optional because they're within these brackets, and they have a default value. And we're just going to say, man, are you possessed keyboard? What are you doing here? Jeez. All right, so naming a naming a parameter. And we're going to just say print compare. Notice how you can actually put the parameter name in there. And then hit enter. And it's giving us a negative one because they're not. So let's just change this to nine and add to three. And you see how it's now a one because it, it does an ordering thing. I was going to use a bool, but let's just say this is 6 and this is 6, and it should come back as 0, meaning they are equal. So why would you want to actually name your parameter? Why can't you just you know, do the order here? Um, very simple. Uh, a lot of more advanced code will actually use name parameters. Uh, when you get into Flutter, you'll actually use them quite a bit. Um, and it's just an elegant way of saying, hey, this is actually going to be this. And I just want to test this. I want to actually move this around. So you notice how we've actually got it backwards. In the compare statement, it's apples, then oranges, but we're actually saying oranges, then apples. This would normally throw an error in other languages, but should run just fine, and it does. So that is also why you would use it if you don't want to use an ordered list or an ordered list of parameters. So. More information, go out and read the official documentation in optional parameters. And you can see how when calling a function, you can specify name parameters, etc., etc. Definitely read up their documentation. It's well worth the read. I know it's a little bit lengthy, uh, but I can't possibly cover everything in these videos. Um, if you found this educational entertaining, the source code will be out on the website. You can just click for the link out to GitHub. And there is a Voidrooms Facebook group with, I think, 1,700 other programmers out there all walks of life. We can definitely help you out with any issues you come up with. Um, unfortunately, I get just an extreme amount of email. I've actually had to make a separate account and hide it from the world just as I couldn't do anything with it. So 
don't email me. Go out to the Void Realms Facebook group and go out to GitHub and get the code. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.